icons and pioneers are basically beginning and game changers. And I did not start Runway, but I changed the face of Runway. But it wasn't called All American and, and uh, uh, European in terms of the corporate style. It was more of a Hello, everybody, and today we are interviewing the pioneer of All American Runway, Devin Elite. Nice to meet you, Devin. Hey, how are you doing? Okay, hello, Devin. Can you introduce yourself, please? Sure. My name is Devin Elite. I am the founding father of the House of Elite International. And this year, we are celebrating 30 years of existence. And I'm the pioneer, the father of all American Runway. Can you tell us about the House of Elite? Can you tell us the history? Sure. The House of Elite um, began in 1988 at the Extravaganza Ball. And the, ball, the house started uh, primarily as a runway house. Um, you had, we had a certain criteria in order to be a member. You had to be six feet tall and taller. We were strictly runway and fashion. We've evolved, of course, since then. You are the pioneer of the all-American category. What makes you the pioneer? I guess because I changed the game, uh, so to speak. Huh. Uh, well, Runway was always a bit more on the feminine side. Back in the day, a lot of times, they wanted to walk like Naomi Campbell, Naomi or, Campbell. or Linda Evangelista, or, or any of the models that had signature walks. I was not comfortable huh. walking like that, so I just kind of did it my way. I presented myself more masculine, still with a little flair because it is ballroom, mm -hmm. but um, that's how All American began. Because it actually began as a challenge. I'll never forget um, Chrissy Montana. I was constantly, I guess, winning over him. <laughs> and one day he came to me and said, if you're not bringing it in Montana, you might as well stay home. I was like, yeah, okay. So I ditched what I was going to wear that night and decided I was going to wear what I came to the ball in. Some jeans, Gee. a white t-shirt, and I walked in. I actually had a, pair, a pack of Marlboros rolled okay. up in my sleeves and a pair of boots and an American flag hanging out my back pocket. And I walked and I went over everybody that was dripping in labels. The look and the walk was so different that it made me stand out. Then when you started with your American walk, who were you trying to look like? I wasn't trying to look like anybody. I was just trying to be, be what I was supposed to be, you know. The whole feminine and flamboyancy was not me. So, you know, it was my choice to be more masculine, but yet still give ballroom what they wanted as far as the entertainment factor, you know. I would do simple little things that, you know, that made it more entertaining. Then what is the difference between all American runway and European runway? European runway is uh, more flamboyant and um, very feminine. And all American is more, more so emulating regular straight runway models, male models. But how have the two categories changed over the years? Back in my day of runway, um, European and all American more of a look than it was a walk. Okay. Everybody basically walked the same, you know. Um, um, we had, there was a lot of flair. You know, ballroom is about taking what uh, what is said and taking the step further and giving that flair which ballroom was so known for, you know. So um, to say All American was first, you know, the style of walking, yes, but it wasn't called All American and, and uh, European in terms of the walking style, it was more of a look. If you were to walk European, you were more androgynous or you were more avant garde. Like your look was very non American looking. And for all American, your look was all American, the boy next to a cow kind of the um, whatever the American periodics, whatever the designers were at that time. You know, that was basically the look. Okay, it was a little bit more clear, it was masculine, but yet. You, there was more like, this or gimmick or kind of flair, ball, flair, ball. You know, 
uh, World America Now is so much like regular male runway that, you know, it gets kind of boring because how much do you do just walking down and back up and walking down and back up? You know, the way I originally did it, it was nasty, but yet it had some, you know, entertainment factors to it. Then in what other ways has runway changed? Well, the premise for any runway is to sell the garment. Uh, basically meaning accentuate their outfit and make people want it. That's what selling is all about. Um, same thing applies to um, ballroom. Basically, you want them to envy you. You want them to be like, oh my God, this is the greatest. You're selling the garment. I mean, the way ballroom is now, it's about, it's about a walk. You know, it's not so much uh, what you have on because you know, most of the categories are costumes now, but still, they look at the selling factor. People come to real shows to see what's the latest in fashion and to, to see what's new. The model's job is to make them want what they have on. In runway, in ballroom, I mean, no one's coming to purchase, but they're coming to see what you present. Is there anything else you would like to tell your audience? Well, ballroom is, ballroom started as a subculture, um, a means for people to escape the realities of their, their conditions, uh, meaning economic, um, ethnic, what, what have you. Um, Borum today have evolved to a place where people come still to escape and live the fantasy, but they know that they can achieve their dreams. Many people come into Borum with dreams and today they're achievable. You know, because of the worldwide spread of Borum, Borum has afforded people many um, opportunities and possibilities that just wasn't there in the 70s and 80s and 90s. But um, I love the culture. It's exciting. It's ever evolving. And it's wonderful and it's worldwide. It's ballroom. All right, in closing, I'd like to give a shout out to the House of Kitch. Peace. <laughs>